For more than a thousand years, humans have been consuming meat and dairy. Back then, it wasn't really a problem. But when we look at today and towards the future, it may present a big challenge. The challenge with that is we've scaled to feeding 7 billion and growing people is it just doesn't work. We're using almost half of the world's arable land surface today fully for animal farming and it just doesn't scale and if we want to continue to eat the meat and dairy foods that we love, we have to find a better way and a more efficient way. Not only does it use lots of land and water, it also generates 14.5% of human-induced greenhouse gases. That's almost the same as transportation. But the reality is, people still love to eat meat and dairy. Is there a way to make it more sustainable? Here's Annabelle from Tomasic's investment team to give us more insights. The only way we can produce a more environmentally sustainable food system is to appeal to the hardcore lovers of meat and dairy products. At Tomasic, we're looking to invest in companies that understand such consumer needs and address these opportunities with innovation. If you look at the flavor profile of meats, we could find really simple solutions out of the plant-based world for how to create the desires of what meat eaters are looking for. This is Peter from San Francisco. He recently switched to a plant-based diet, but he's been struggling to find better tasting meat alternatives. I converted over to a plant-based diet just to live a healthier lifestyle for myself as well as for my new daughter. Conversion was definitely difficult. That I did crave the meat fiber kind of taste. There were meat substitutes they would sell at supermarket, but they tasted basically like textured, flavored ground beans put into a patty. I taste the char, which is good. It has like the texture of meat. It's definitely better than the patty substitutes. In the U.S., more people like Peter are switching to plant-based foods. Nearly 7 out of 10 Americans say they want to increase their plant protein intake, citing concerns for their health and the environment. The cheese and dairy was a staple of my diet before, and then became fully vegan, no animal products at all. It was difficult initially to give up cheese. For myself, it was worth the sacrifice. I wanted to be the best example for my children. I wanted to be kind to animals and be kind to the planet. Another startup may help people like Emily eat dairy products again, and even give people who haven't had the opportunity to do so. Today there are people that either can't or don't want to consume as many animal products because of the environmental impact, the presence of things like allergens and lactose intolerance, and we can make dairy ingredients that address all of these different problems. Perfect Day produces dairy protein without any animal. But how do they do that? We use fermentation. It's the art and science of converting nutrients from one form into the other. We've developed a type of microflora, like yeast, that eats sugar and ferments it into milk protein, which we then purify and use to make all of your favorite dairy products. The only difference is it didn't come from an animal. There are two demographics that I think are the most excited about what we're doing. The first one is people that are into sports nutrition because we can actually make a really concentrated form of high quality dairy nutrition available. The second group are people that are generally skewing younger, so millennials for example, but also Gen Z. People that are looking to have a kinder, greener impact on the planet, but still love good food. Perfect Day and Impossible Foods are just a few among a growing number of startups in synthetic biology. It's projected to grow globally from $5.5 billion in 2015 to $40 billion by 2020. When we think about our investments in food, we think about it through the lens of synthetic biology. It is focused on genetically engineering microbes to produce novel proteins and enzymes. In the case of Perfect Day, this is producing products like milk that doesn't contain lactose. In the case of Impossible Foods, this is heme protein without using cows. As a whole generation of millennials begins purchasing products that aren't just good for them, but also good for the environment, we believe that the demand for such alternative protein products will continue to grow. And these companies are well positioned to dramatically reduce greenhouse gases through their product. And that's the world that we aspire to through our investments.